So I'm not gonna lie, I really wanted a moon swatch. And if you don't know what that is, it kind of looks like one of these guys. And I was really determined to get one when I took a trip to Toronto and Montreal. But instead, I found this watch, which doesn't look anything near as close to a moon swatch, but that's not really the point. This watch was really a lesson in value proposition. You can get watches with high quality materials for just a few hundred dollars. And despite the rising prices of their watches recently, I still feel like Seiko is one of the best when it comes to value proposition. So without further ado, this is my review of the Seiko STBR021. So just a quick backstory about my trip to Toronto and Montreal. I basically visited the swatch store every day for two weeks, hoping I'd be able to land a moon swatch, but unfortunately, I ended up empty-handed. Then soon after, reviews of the watch came out complaining about the build quality of these watches, like the color leaking from the Neptune model. And then there was the final bombshell of the CEO of Swatch announcing that these watches would not be available online as previously promised. At that point, I thought that there's gotta be better watches out there for the same price as the Moon Swatch or even less. And that's how I ended up with this Seiko. So the unboxing will be really quick today because there is no box. This watch just came shipped with the warranty card and some instructions. And most of it is in Japanese because this watch is from Japan. When we flip open the warranty card, you can see that this watch was originally sold in a store called Mega and it was sold pretty recently, just about five months ago. Now moving on to the design, you can clearly see that this is a diver watch because we have very legible hour markers that are filled with loom. And there's also a healthy amount of loom on the hour and minute hands, as well as on the end of the seconds hand. Now the markers in the hands aren't as large as other Seiko divers, such as the SRPG59 that I was interested in a few months ago. This might be because this is technically a women's watch, and there's actually a men's version of this that's very similar, but just a little bit bigger. Both the STBR021, which is the women's version, and the SBDN051, which is the men's version, were released in collaboration with a brand called Lowercase, which I believe is a streetwear brand in Japan. One difference I noticed between the online photos and the actual watch in person is that the dial looked a lot more white online, versus in real life, it's more of a silvery white. And it's not a huge deal, but I was kind of hoping that it would be more of a pure white. Looking at the text at the 6 o'clock position, we have the X logo for Prospects, which is Seiko's sport collection. And then below that, we have the word Solar, because this is a solar-powered watch. Seiko isn't usually known for their solar watches, but they do have some. And this one is rated to plus or minus 15 seconds per month, with a 10-month power reserve. And finally, we have Divers 200 meters printed, because it is a diver's watch, but I'm probably not going to test its diving capabilities anytime soon. And finally, the date window is at the 4 o'clock position instead of the 3 o'clock position. I kind of like this configuration because I feel like it hides the date window more. If I had it my way though, I wouldn't want a date window at all. The loom on this watch is pretty good. I think Seiko diver watches are known for their decent loom. And even with these smaller than normal indices, I can still easily tell the time. The watch remains pretty bright for the first 10 minutes, and then it begins to decrease at a steady pace. After about the 40 minute mark, the camera can barely detect any light from the watch, but you can still see it a little with the naked eye. Moving on to the mineral crystal, there is a slight dome effect to it, with no scratches so far, but I'm guessing I'm going to accumulate more. The case has that classic tuna look, and the reason why it's called that is that the bezel and the roundness of the case kind of resembles a can of tuna. It's not the easiest bezel to turn because the plastic case makes it so you can only put your fingers at the 3 and 8 o'clock position, but it does have a satisfying click. There is a bit of wiggle room with the bezel, and I'm not too sure if that's normal because this is my first diver watch, but I don't think it's that bad. And going back to that plastic case, yes, this watch is partially made of plastic. It is good quality plastic. It's smooth, it's sturdy, but it is plastic nonetheless. Flipping to the back, we have a solid stainless steel backing with the Seiko Ocean Wave logo. Interestingly, it's branded as an Air Divers 200 meters which I feel like is kind of like an oxymoron because being in the air is the opposite of diving. The included strap is a nice glacier white color with the logo at the end. Because it's made of silicon, it's soft to the touch and you don't have to worry about it getting wet. The strap is held together by a pin and buckle, which is unfortunately unsigned. Usually pin and buckle designs can cause watch straps to get creased and damaged, but I haven't noticed any creases with this strap so far. So overall, I really like the design. I feel like that white clean aesthetic would be great with like a winter outfit. I do wish that the dial was more of a pure white. I feel like especially in low light conditions, it's more of a silvery tone than a white tone. And again, some people aren't going to be a fan of that plastic casing. 
I myself am not a fan of plastic, but because the other components of the watch are made of metal, it has a nice heft to it, so I feel like that's a good compensation. Another thing that I noticed is that the strap seems to catch dust pretty easily. I don't know if it's because it's made of silicon or because the strap is white, but you can definitely see dust start to accumulate on the band. Now despite the fact that I just listed a bunch of negatives, these are honestly just small nitpicks. I still like the design of the watch. and I'm usually pretty critical when it comes to diver watches, so if I do like a diver watch, it's because I really really like it. Moving on to the movement, as I said before, it is a solar quartz watch. And I do like how it's not very loud when it ticks, and it also doesn't stutter like some cheaper quartz watches. Sometimes when it ticks, it'll start to miss the minute markers, but a lot of inexpensive quartz watches will do that. And I've owned this watch for about a month now, and it's only gained around 3 seconds, so it's pretty accurate. When you do need to adjust the day and time, you have the screw down crown at the 4 o'clock position. I have no major complaints with operating the crown, it's pretty much your standard watch crown, but you do have to be careful not to cross thread when screwing down the crown, which usually happens if you don't push down the crown with equal force. So overall, the movement isn't as interesting as other watches that I own, such as a spring drive movement or a high accuracy quartz, but given the price, it's not too bad. Moving on to the dimensions, we have 42.8 millimeters in diameter, 43 millimeters lug to lug, 11.8 millimeters in height, and 20 millimeter lugs. On the wrist, it is very comfortable thanks to that silicon strap. The short lugs make this watch fit nicely on my 6 inch wrists. I can't say that about a lot of diver watches because a lot of them are too big for my wrists. One thing that's a little bit annoying though is that the strap kind of sticks out because my wrist is so small and you end up with this little nub that sometimes will get caught on things. Overall, I have no major complaints about the wearability. In fact, I used to only like leather straps and metal bracelets before, but I think this watch has won me over on silicon straps. So overall, I have no major complaints about the wearability. It's pretty comfortable. It's not a type of watch that you can quickly slip under a cuff, so it's not very subtle, but that's kind of all diver watches in general. Now in terms of price and availability, you can find this watch for around 400 to 500 Canadian dollars, or about 300 to 400 US dollars. This was released back in 2019 as a non-limited edition model, which is different from the men's version, which only had 1200 produced. This watch was actually a collaboration piece with a brand called Lowercase, which I believe is a Japanese street brand. And speaking of which, this is a Japanese domestic model, so you can only find it in Japanese online stores or auction websites like eBay or Yahoo Auctions Japan. And I was able to get this timepiece for only $200. So I've said it before and I'll say it one more time, Yahoo Auctions Japan or just any auction website from Japan is the best place to get watches. So to conclude, I really did want a moon swatch, but I ended up getting a watch that is made of better materials, it's not copying another watch's design, it arguably has a better movement, it's cheaper, and at the end of the day, why would I buy a watch that looks and feels like a 3D print model when you can get a Seiko Solar Diver for $200? So if you were in the same position as me, you were waiting for a moon swatch, you were waiting in line trying to get this timepiece and you weren't lucky, Look for other watches because there's way better watches out there objectively in my opinion for around the same price point point. and if you're looking for a white diver watch in particular i feel like the stbr021 is a great choice for people with small wrists and if you have larger wrists try looking at the sbdn051 but anyways that is my review of the seiko stbr021 i hope you enjoyed the video and if you are interested in my content be sure to consider subscribing thank you all for watching this video and as always I'll see you guys next time.